A new humanity is emerging. 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 Evolution is the way of the universe. It is inevitable. 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 So why do you fight change? Davis was born Betty Jean Grayson in 1925 in Little Rock, Arkansas. She was the daughter of a prominent Arkansas physician who went on to become the state health officer. And her mother had a great singing voice and performed in their local First Baptist Church choir. From an early age, Betty Jean swam, golfed, and played tennis. Additionally, she was a superb horseback rider, later performing in rodeos. And like the original Annie Oakley, she was an expert trick shot. But what she really wanted to be was an actress. It was her dream. And she put legs to that dream. Betty Jean trained in drama and dance at the University of Texas. While there, she married Robert Davis in 1945, changing her name to Betty Davis. They were later to have a daughter named Terry. After World War II, they moved to Hollywood, where she worked as a hat check girl, where she was discovered by an agent who set her up with an MGM screen test. And consequently, she was signed to a contract. But her name had to change. For you see, there already was a famous actress named Betty Davis. She said, I went under contract to MGM around 1946. But they told me, we can't have a Betty Davis because of Betty Davis. And we can't have a Betty Grayson because of Catherine Grayson. Then a guy in the casting department said, how about Gail Davis? So that's where it came from.
Gail Davis. Really and truly, I wanted to be a musical comedy star. I thought Jeepers, they were super. That's the thing I want to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have the voice or the feet. In 1949, she hooked up with movie producer and cowboy star Gene Autry and appeared in a string of 14 features for Columbia Pictures and 15 of the singing cowboy TV shows. And this was before Annie Oakley was produced. She was a busy actress. I started out at MGM for about three months. Then they sold my contract to RKO. I was there for a year before I started freelancing and made The Far Frontier in 1949 with Roy Jim Rogers when Dale Evans was pregnant and then Dale came back. I freelanced in shows with Monty Hale, Rocky Lane, Jimmy Wakeley, The Cisco Kid, The Lone Ridger, and many, many more. Although her marriage produced a daughter in 1949, her seven-year marriage ended in divorce. Subsequently, she became romantically involved with Jean Autry for a number of years. I don't know why you fellas always want the prunes on the top shelf. And those down below are just the same. <laughs> they came up with the idea of a Western series for a girl. It had never been done before. So they ran a contest throughout the United States, trying to find someone who could ride and shoot and act. I got very upset because this was right down my alley. I felt it was me. I went and talked to the producer, Mandy Schaefer, and he said no. So I went back home and put on blue jeans, a gingham shirt, put freckles on my nose, and put my hair up in pigtails. And I went back to Mandy's office and said, I think I should play that part. He said, you got enough courage to do this. Let's give you a test. We did the test, and I guess I got the part, and I passed. I've been playing Annie ever since. I was up at 4 o'clock every morning to braid my pigtails, have breakfast, and head for the ranch. We worked from sunup to sundown. We worked in Pioneer Town, and there was a big tall mountain out there they called Panic Peak. And we could get the last shot of the day on the top of the mountain at about 8.30 at night. By the time we took the bus back into town, it was 9.30. Get a bite to eat, go to bed, and get back up at 4 o'clock the next morning. When we first started, we were doing three shows a week, working seven days a week, when we were on location. My father was a doctor back in Little Rock. He liked to go hunting with a 22 rifle, so I learned early how to shoot. Do you 
think you're doing, Tag? Watch me beat him to the draw. Jump! Look at that. Right through the heart. Good shooting, huh? No, Tag. I wouldn't say that was very good shooting. What do you mean? I shot him dead, and before he could even get his gun up. Tag, I think it's about time you and I had a little talk about guns. In the first place, you don't use them to go around killing people. Well, that's what they're for, aren't they? Well, if I didn't know you so well, young man, I'd say you weren't very bright. An expert uses a gun to protect lives, not to take them. It's a defense weapon, Tag, now remember that. Well, how are you going to defend yourself if some varmint draws on you without you beating to it and kill him first? I'll show you. Pull that rope. Gosh! See what I mean? I've never killed anybody in my life. But I've always wondered just how close I could come. Annie, you're out of your head. Maybe I am. But you better start praying. I'm still a good shot. I ought to be able to come closer than that. It's lucky you didn't move. That one could have been real messy. Annie, stop it. Stop it. You're going to tell me where my brother is. All right, sure. Tag, go get the horses. It's kind of dangerous to turn your back around here. Don't try it. I'd like to get a shot at Jim, too. There'll be other chances. supposed to be the marshal is Joe Carter's brother, and they got away. Here, Lofty, I'm sorry. I think they're headed for Ludlow Pass. If you hurry, you can catch them. You got it. Of course, I had him surrounded. Here, notch that. Oh, oh, I'll get him. <laughs> that got him. Ah, that's one more. Notch it again. Well, back to the wagon. Wonderful, Alfred. Oh, you want more, huh? Blue Hill. I'll bet they're sorry they ever tangled with me. Happy trails to you. You hot little heater. You want a teddy bear, baby? Stand by. Frank, give me a light. Shoot it, my friend, will you? Uh, make smaller notches. I may run out of the handle. I never thought that shooting. A little high. I'm slicing again. Yep. Have you ever noticed they were all married? The 1950s television woman was generally always married. I Love Lucy, classic series, but Lucille Ball was married to Desi Arnaz. How about Leave it to Beaver? Infamous, or maybe famous, <laughs> Barbara Billingsley, who played the mom, of course was married. Ozzy and Harriet, the famous couple, out of which comes Ricky Nelson, the famous pop singer. Harriet, of course, married. These were all shows that, were, that came out in the uh, early and mid-50s. And there's nothing wrong with having a show about uh, married people. I mean, today, it, it still goes on. Nothing wrong with it at all. Marriage is great. 
Uh, a lot of people swear by it and love it. Other people, they got married and don't like it and need to get out. You know, marriage is all over the map. But the problem was, in the 1950s, with the World War II generation coming back, getting married and having lots of children, the baby boomers, there just was no uh, examples, role models of being single and with a career, having something to do other than being married and having kids. There was just one notable exception, and you know what that exception was, don't you? That exception was Gail Davis as Annie Oakley. She was single, no children or boyfriend, and happy. Gail Davis, a very different 50s TV woman. In 1955, Annie Oakley licensed merchandise topped 10 million dollars in sales. That would be a near one billion dollars in today's value. Her merchandise was a major market bonanza. Dell Comics produced 16 issues of Annie Oakley with Gail Davis. She sold records, costumes, magazines, and toys. We're mostly shooting television out here with such shows as Oh Wider, Gunsmoke, and many, many others, including Annie Oakley. And they, by the way, there's Miss Gail Davis now, who plays the part of Annie Oakley, and she's with Jim Garner and uh, Jack Kelly. Hi, Gene. Hi, fellas. Hi, Gene. Hey, Annie, aren't you on the wrong end of that rifle range? Well, no, not really, Gene. Actually, I'm holding this target for Jim. I see. You know, he's going to shoot right through the hole in this plate and then break the little white disc that's behind it. You ready, right. Jim? Are you through okay. that, Brother Brad? Well, I'm going to add to the fun a little bit and I think toss a blindfold on you. All right. Fun for who? Well, don't worry, Gail. He's pretty good at this shot. Oh, now, Jack. <laughs> All right, Brother Bart. Oh? When I count five. One. One. Two. Two, three, three four. four. Oh, that's wonderful. We're mighty fine shooting there, Jim. And Annie Oakley, you better stick to your laurels. <laughs> Welcome right. to Dave Garraway in New York for a moment. Is there a safe explanation for that trick, too? Well, yes, Dave. I'm not actually that good a shot. I'm not bad, but it's safe as long as I have Rod Red Wing standing behind me with live ammunition while I'm firing blanks. Rod's an expert, I know, on the fast draw and on trick target shooting. Uh, high noon, duel in the sun, the outlaw, Shane, gunfight at OK Corral. Some of the pictures he was gun coach on. Hey, have you kids ever tried hostess snowballs? Well, I think they're pretty terrific myself. Just take a look at these. You see, every snowball has loads of chewy coconut sprinkled. Admin had difficulties selling advertising on the Annie Oakley show. Advertising, of course, was needed to fund the production. It was just that there wasn't enough belief in a female-led show, even though she was a merchandising bonanza. Hostess snowballs come two in a package. Two big ones. Risky's Dog Food presents Annie Oakley. I'm David the Bruce. Thank you for joining us today on Amuse, where we took a very important and special look at a little-known actress by the name of Gail Davis. First, I want to tell you uh, why you've probably never heard of her before, and then I want to tell you why she's so very important to you. First, here's why you've probably never heard of her. She was on in the early days of television. And in those early days, it was black and white and primitive. Today, we got color, man. So it's very hard to keep black and white shows on television. They just don't fly. And cowboys, uh, you know, every once in a while we'll have a, a cowboy show. You know, there's like Westworld now, and uh, we did have uh, Deadwood. You know, some very good shows, but generally you don't see westerns anymore. That craze kind of left. Cop, uh, cop shows replaced them, you know. 
uh, cowboy shows became cop shows. And then other women picked up the idea of being a happy single woman with a career, you know, shows like uh, Mary Tyler Moore or That Girl, and they worked out very successfully. And right to this day, there's, there's many role models like that for young women. But just to remind you, back in that day when she came out, she was the only one, and therefore, that's what makes her so very, very important. When she left the show, so important did she think that that image was that she continued to in, uh, incarnate the um, Annie Oakley character that she had worked hard and long on because she felt it was important for young women, young girls to have that role model. She went out to charities and she was in um, rodeos. She was quite the cl uh, crowd pleaser. Yes, she was. And um, But then, you know, she got older and that's the way it goes. So she faded from public, public memory and public mind. But here's why uh, she's important. And here's why I'm glad you watched the show today. She represents what can happen if you truly believe in your dream. Without a dream, you perish. From a little girl onward, she really wanted to do drama to be an actress she really liked that and she really liked being outdoors tennis horseback riding you know she, swimming she loved it all she was just that kind of a person she and and so she continued to do what she enjoyed especially that dream in high school she was in every drama that she could be and when she graduated she went to the university and studied acting and then location wise she moved herself to hollywood where she could be in a situation where maybe she could be uh, where she could pick up a few roles in films and it didn't matter whether it was a b film or a, an extra in a film she didn't care she just wanted to be there and uh, put legs she put legs to her dream and uh, fortunately uh, several things happened and it suddenly she was in all kinds of movies you couldn't have grown up in the 1940s uh, late 1940s without seeing her on um, <clears throat> on the movies so um, that's the way it was and you couldn't have you couldn't have watched television in the early 50s without coming across her she really made an impact and that's because she put legs to her dreams and that's what Gail Davis represents it's the importance of working hard to make that dream come true without hard work then it isn't a dream if you don't put legs to the dream it isn't a dream it's just a thought it's just a fancy it's not a reality and the only way to make that come true is with hard work. And that's what she did. You know, when she showed up at these um, movie sites, she showed up with her lines memorized, good to go. And she was pleasant, uplifting. She lifted people up as, she, as, as um, uh, she did her career. And that's important because that meant further roles. Life oftentimes is more about others than it is ourselves. People like to be around people that lift them up, help them out. And that was her. So those are the lessons that Gail Davis teaches us and uh, so very important. Now I've got a clip from uh, the Annie Oakley TV shows and I want to show it to you. This is the information that can change your life. Let's take a look. I'm sorry. I guess I was starting to dream too. Don't ever stop, Mary. You have to dream things out before they ever become a reality. Your father knew that if he wanted the springs, he had to dream the springs. Well, it even says so in the Bible. Where there is no vision, people perish. I know it's the truth, Annie. A new humanity is emerging. 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 Evolution is the way of the universe. It is inevitable. 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 So why do you fight change? Control. Fear. Scarcity. Scarcity. 